Well, I'm your host, Pastor Asa Docker, and once again, I want to welcome you to the Keys to Kingdom Living program. Thank you for tuning in and watching us today. We're going to share the conclusion of last week's message entitled, A Virgin Shall Conceive and Bring Forth a Son. This will absolutely touch your life. If you didn't get to watch the first part, please go on our website and check out the first part so that you can get a better understanding of what this message, the final part of it, is saying today to you as a believer. We've got to know what it is that we say we believe in so that when we're challenged out in the world through persecution or hostility or rejection of what we believe in, that we're not moved by that, that we stay strong and we stand up for Jesus and we stand up for the truth of God's Word because it will outlast our enemy. So I won't keep you. You stay tuned. Listen to what the Spirit has to say, and I'll be back with you in a moment. God's not spooky. The Word of God is not, not out there in the deep where you have to get crazy in order to understand it. If you want to understand the deep things of God, humble yourself. Those who humble him, themselves before him, he will reveal to them the hidden mysteries and the wisdom of God. And he'll make even the deep things so simple that even a child can understand them. So how does this spiritual transformation take place where I was once a, a slave to sin and now he makes me a, a holy and righteous son of the living God? It all begins by faith. Now look there in uh, Genesis 12, 1. Are you there? Now the Lord had what? Said. What does that word mean? It means he spoke the word over him, right? The word was with God and the word was God. So when God said something, he spoke life to, to Abram, and that life was the light of men. It showed him the way to eternal life, correct? Now the Lord said to Abram, Get you, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. Wow. He's not only going to have a family, he's going, out of him is going to come a great nation. Didn't say many nations, he said a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. I hate it for these people that are coming up against Christians because what they don't realize, they're touching God's elect. The battle belongs to the Lord, and he will repay. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, right? I will curse him who curses you, and in you all, all, how many? All the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now how in the world is Abraham going to be able to be such a blessing to all the families of the earth? I mean, thousands of years have transpired since Abraham died. How's he a blessing to all the families of the earth? There's something coming up. It says in, in Romans 4 that when Abraham heard these things, he believed God. See, it said there in John 1, was 12, 13, 14. He says, He came to his own. His own did not receive him. But as many as received him, he gave them the power to become children of God who believed on his name. Faith causes you to receive power. Power to do what? To become holy like God is holy. To become love like God is love. To become powerful like God is powerful. To become all that God is while we're still in this flesh. So when Abraham believed God, it says he received the word or came into agreement with what God said. Hang with me. Now, before this moment, before God came and said to Abram, come out. Be ye separate from your people, and I will make you a new people. And I will make you your name great, and out of you shall come a nation. Before that moment, before he heard the word of God, there were no Jews. He was a heathen. Say heathen. heathen. When Abram heard God's promises to make him a great nation... And God would make his name great, and in him all the nations of the earth shall, shall be blessed. Abraham believed God. Now, when Abraham believed God, 
he, Abram, became the father or the founder of the faith which produced the Jews in the earth. What happened there? When Abram heard God and says, I'm going to set you apart, come out from your father's lineage, come out from your father's curses. Are you getting it? I'm going to keep preaching until you get it. He says, come out from among them. Paul teaches us in 1 Corinthians, I believe it is, come out from among them, be ye separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and then I will receive you unto myself. Now watch this. When I receive you unto myself, the Lord says, you will be my sons and daughters, and I will be your God. So he was given Abraham, or Abram, the opportunity to come out. Now, if he comes out, and he believes in God, God is going to make him different, transform him while he's coming out. How do you know when he is transformed? When God changes his name from Abram to Abraham. God with Abram. When he steps out, when he comes out from his mother and father and all the shadows and all the curses of, of his father's lineage, when he comes out, he is separating himself from his baggage. He is separating himself from his past. You're going to get a shadow, a type, an understanding of what God was doing in Abram that day because when he came out, he came out into a new species. Now you're getting weird. Well, after this, God starts talking to him about a seed. So he gets tired of waiting on God. Do you ever get tired of waiting on God? Don't get tired of waiting on God because you'll produce an Ishmael. <laughs> Say that quietly. He got tired of waiting on God. He says, I tell you what, we'll make our own seed. That wasn't God's seed, that was Abraham's seed. Now here's the problem. When Abraham tried to make his own way, produce his own seed, God looked at Ishmael and rejected him. Yes. This is not it. So Abram gets desperate. He said, God, I'm going childless here. I'm tired. What about my servant Eleazar? What about his son? Can I take him? God said, no. You need to get over this, Abram. I'm giving you a son, and he's going to come out of your wounds, your loins, and out of Sarah's womb. So when finally it was time, see, he believed Abraham. Uh, Abraham believed God. And it said there in Isaiah four, uh, Romans 4 that he did not stagger at the promises of God, though his body was dead. He was beyond, he was impotent. He was beyond the ability to get his wife pregnant and Sarah was old so old that she could not bear a child in her latter years kind of like Elizabeth the cousin of Mary so so now you've got Sarah who is barren you've got uh, Abraham who is who is impotent and God says guess what guys this time next year y'all gonna have a son that son came through faith not through sperm He's already tried to get his wife pregnant. It didn't work. But when God said, this time next year you're going to have a son, that faith went into his heart, shot down to his sperm, and his sperm got his wife pregnant with a supernatural child. That child was a firstborn Jew. You ever heard that? Firstborn. Why? Because he was born of faith. Now, when it says Jesus, there in Romans 8, is the firstborn among many brethren, he was born of faith. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the thing that starts, the first step that starts the spiritual transformation of a person going from being a slave to sin to becoming a son, a royal son or daughter of, of God, it begins with faith. And so God had to get Abraham into a place where he would operate by faith. And it took him 25 years to break Abram of not having faith. How long does it take us to get broken so that we will operate by faith? I want to preach that, but I, we don't have time. 
So when Abraham believed, heard and believed the promises of God to make him a great nation, God started began doing a work in him, and he became the father of the faith. Now, this is interesting. Out of Abraham comes Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. He is the father of three faiths, but there's only one accepted son. Jesus. It was through Abraham's faith that Isaac was born. Isaac being, the, the, uh, being born of Abraham's faith and not of his flesh was a type or a prophetic shadow of Christ being born of God and not of man. You say, well, why did God do it this way? Why did, why did, he, why did he waste uh, several thousand years between Abraham and Mary before he brought in his son? Why didn't he go ahead and, and bring uh, a, uh, Jesus in through Sarah? Before God does anything in the spirit, 1 Corinthians says he does it in the natural. And the Old Testament, being weak because of the weaknesses of our flesh, could not produce the holy things of God. So God said, I will do it prophetically in the natural with Abraham and Sarah and start the lineage and introduce a new race through Abraham, the Jewish race, to show mankind what is going to happen when I bring my son into the earth. And they are the firstborn among many brethren. You will then look at the Jews and say they were different. They were set apart. They were ostracized. They were persecuted. But they were God's elect. I understand this because of that. Now I receive this. I am not a sinner saved by grace. I am a born-again child of God, and Jesus is in my heart, and he makes me holy even as God is holy. Amen. Right? Amen. So he does the natural before he does the spiritual. Now, turn with me to Luke 126. Now, now, when Jesus came, he said, I did not come to do away with the law. I came to fulfill it. So once the, the law was fulfilled, then God was able then to release the spiritual dynamic of what God wanted to do all along in the earth through Adam, but could not. He was weak. So God sent another Adam, the last Adam, born of a woman, but conceived by God's Holy Spirit. Now, Luke, what did I say? Luke 1. Luke 1, 26. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. There is a little bit of uh, commonality between this uh, bl uh, blessing and this salutation or greeting and the one that God gave Abraham in Genesis 12. Didn't he call Abraham blessed? Yes. Now he's calling Mary blessed among all women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of grieving this was. Yeah, I would too, wouldn't you? Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Don't you know this was something heavy to be laid on this virgin woman, girl? seriously heavy stuff because she's heard about this all her life being a Jew and now the angel comes and says it's you woman I can imagine the blood just ran out of her head and into her feet and out on the floor 
Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I do not have a man, do not know a man? I'm not, I'm not having sex, in other words. I'm a virgin. How can I have a child without a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called, here it comes, the Son of God. Different than all others. He will be the Son of God. Now indeed Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. A lot like Sarah. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then watch this. Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your what? According to your word, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word was light, and that light was the life to men. When she said, be it unto me according to your word, it was like Abraham believing what God said. A year from now, you and Sarah shall have a son. When she, she said, be it unto me, she was saying, I agree with what you just said. I am going to conceive a holy thing in my womb and he will be the son of the living God. It took faith for her to believe that. It wasn't a mental ascension like, I think I, I get this, I think I understand this. No, it was strictly by faith. She couldn't have understood how this could happen without a man. That was her understanding. But when she said, be it unto me according to your word, she was doing this by faith. God could do nothing in Mary's life supernaturally. Listen to me. He couldn't do nothing in Mary's life supernaturally until she was able to come into agreement with what Gabriel had told her. She had to come into agreement. Hebrews eleven six. Without faith, you cannot please or agree with God. When we have faith in God or in His Word, it simply means that we agree with what He has said over our circumstances. Mary believed what was spoken to her, and this gave the Holy Spirit an avenue through her heart, her spiritual heart, to impregnate her womb. These promises do not come by might nor by power. The promises that are manifested in our life come through the Spirit of God, through our heart, into our hands. So when she heard this, she believed it, she received it. It allowed the Holy Spirit to impregnate her womb with God's holy seed. At the moment of, of faith being produced, a virgin became pregnant with a baby without a man. Who's ever heard of such a thing? Once you and I believe in God's Word, who is Jesus, it opens up our heart and our spirit for the Holy Spirit to make His entrance and transform us into a child of God. Get this, please. Paul wrote to the church at Galatia when he heard that the, the, the believers, the Messianic Jews, had started going back under the law, trying to fit in with the Jews that were under the law. He says, I travail over you until Christ be formed in you. He used that word like they were pregnant with a child. Right? Right? When, when Mary believed the Word of God, the Word became flesh, and His name was Jesus in her womb. It came through her heart, but it ended up in her womb. When we believe the Word of the Lord, and we agree that if we confess Jesus as Savior and believe in Him as our Lord, we shall be saved. When we confess and believe, then we, we receive Christ not into our, spiritual, our physical womb. We receive Him in our spiritual womb our spirit. We become filled with Christ. Now, look at John 3. Almost done. <clears throat> John 3, 1. <clears throat> there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. 
Jesus uh, answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is what? Born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is the one who instituted the principle of being born again here in John chapter 3. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven or kingdom of God. Now, in order to become born again, we must be born of the Spirit of God, correct? It's not just about I believe. Hebrews 11, at the end of the chapter, it says, all, it, it names all of the people in, in the hall of faith in chapter 11. And it gets down there to the last part about how they had suffered, how they had, had died, and, and how they had gone through much persecution. And it gets down and it said, and all these died not receiving the promise, God having something better for us that they should not be perfected apart from us. Right? That's what it said. So they believed, but they didn't have the Holy Spirit. Right. Don't check out on me. This is going somewhere. How do you go from being a slave to sin to a son or daughter of the living God? That's what we're talking about, right? We talked about how Abraham believed God. It was counted to him to righteousness, but, and he became the beginning of the Jewish race, a, 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 a sect of people that was different than all the other nations of the world. And in him, all the nations would be blessed. Now, we talked about how that faith got him the seed of Isaac into the, and through that lineage, Mary now has come. She receives that by faith, that, that word that says you are going to be the mother of God's only begotten son. She believes it. She receives it into her flesh. But how do you get that Christ child into your spirit? Because the Spirit was not given to the Jews because they rejected Jesus. It was not under the law that the Holy Spirit was given. It was after Jesus had come full of grace and truth and offered his blood upon the cross, appeased the wrath of God, went up to heaven and, and uh, sat down at the right hand of majesty. Then God said, I will send my Spirit upon all flesh. So now we're going from the natural to just believing to now Jesus has applied the blood to the cross. Man believes on it. Now the Spirit comes. You go to Acts. Paul's writing, I believe it is. And, and they're, they're people getting, they're believing in Jesus, the Jews are. <coughs> and they say this. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you have believed? And they said, we have not so much as heard of the Holy Spirit. So you've got a lot of people believing, but they're not born again. Mm -hmm. Jesus told Nicodemus, unless one is born again, they shall not see the kingdom of God. There's a lot of people believing today, but they're not born again. Because you cannot be born again unless you be born of God's Spirit. Now you've got to believe, you've got to confess, but then you've got to receive. When you receive, I, I have not as much as heard of the Holy Spirit. And what happened? They laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. When they received the Holy Spirit, they became born again. Now because we, over the generations... Preachers have compromised and watered down and diluted the, the authenticity, the uh, potency of God's Word and how you become born again because we wanted to please man rather than God. We have allowed people to believe without transformation of being born again by the Spirit. And now you have people sitting in pews trying to live through their faith without the power of the Holy Spirit. And they fail. And they wonder, why am I not getting it? Why, cannot, why can I not live this Christian life? It is because you have to receive the Holy Spirit. You must be born again. You were born once. Now you must be born again of the Spirit of God. 1 John 3, 9 says this. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. Does that mean we don't make any mistakes? 
That's not what that means. It means you do not continue in habitual sin. Whoever is born of God does not continue in habitual sin. Hebrews, I think it's uh, 6, says, If you sin willfully after you have received the good things of God, the Holy Spirit, the gift of God, and, 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 and partaken of the power of God, if you sin after that, there is no more atonement. Whoever has been born of God does not sin habitually. For his seed, there it is, his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he has what? Been born of God. Isn't that good? Not only is that convicting, it's liberating. If it has the power to convict me, then it has the power to liberate me. If the, if the gospel that people preach doesn't have the power to convict me, then I'm not going to get liberated by that junk. It's got to be powerful enough to convict me, and if it convicts me, then it will transform me. Jesus said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. His word has power to transform you. From the old sinner, the wretched that you once were, to a glorious son and daughter of God that does not choose to live in fornication, does not choose to live in adultery, does not choose to live a lie. But you say, I'm coming out of my past. I've been given a new spirit. I am a new creation in Christ. I am not that old man. Amen. Paul wrote in, in 1 Corinthians, he says, I have wronged no man. Paul, did you get amnesia? Because it's written in Acts of how you persecuted the Christians above all else and you killed them. That wasn't Paul. That was Saul. There, there, this, this thing in Christianity that we have made it to become has confused people so much that it's hard for them to understand what it means to live holy. And look at our children and our grandchildren. They look like the world. They act like the world. They talk like the world. Why? Because the gospel that they're hearing is, is not convicting and it will not liberate. Amen me or run me off. Amen. We've got to preach the unadulterated word of God. Jesus was conceived in the womb of a virgin making him different than all else. Stand to your feet. Well, thank you so, once again for tuning in, for watching the program. Would you let your family and friends uh, know about this program and, and what it means to you and how it has ministered to your life? There are many out there that are not able to go to church. They're shut in. Their physical health does not allow them to get out and go to a church. Uh, please let them know about our program and, and allow this word to minister to your family and friends as well. And who knows, God may use this program to bring lost loved ones to Christ. That's why we're here. So God bless you and thank you for tuning in. If you have any prayer needs, be sure and get those to us at w, uh, prayer at whcnorth.org. And thank you for tuning in. We pray that you've been impacted by today's message. If you need more information or would like to contact us, visit us on our website at whcnorth.org or contact us by phone at 706-374-6175. To write us, our address is P.O. Box 968, Morganton, Georgia, 30560. Our campus is located at 135 Bud Franklin Drive, Blairsville, Georgia, 30512. 